afternoon. <laughs> well, bless the Lord. Uh, welcome to our Wednesday midweek Bible study. It is such a blessing to have you with us, and we are praying uh, that God is uh, blessing you right now. Amen. Uh, thank God for your presence this afternoon and for your being with us. We're thankful to God for each of you, and uh, we're thankful that uh, you took the time out of your busy schedule to join us this morning. Uh, as we uh, continue our Bible study, hang on just a second. Let me get things going here. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta check something and make sure that we are. We got our sound and all that stuff going here. Uh, okay, it says I'm live now. Uh, but I don't see nothing. Da -da -da -da. There I am. <laughs> okay. Uh, did you get it, hun? That's it. Does it sound like we got sound, so we should be there good shape. All right. All right. Praise God. Um, I guess I had to check, make sure last Sunday when we started, uh, we, we had a picture, but we didn't have any sound. So I just had to make sure we had sound. All right. Let's invite the Lord's presence among us this morning as we get started. Father, we are thankful and we are grateful for uh, our time together this morning. We pray, Lord, a special prayer for these that are joining us this morning. Lord, however they might be joining us, we pray, dear Lord, that you would bless us, bless our coming together this morning. We pray, Lord, that you and you alone might be glorified uh, through our coming together this morning. And Lord, uh, that uh, you might receive the glory, you might receive the praise for our time together. And Lord, we I pray that you lead us, guide us, and direct us in our study this morning. And Lord, uh, we will be careful to give you glory, praise, and honor. Lord, it is in your precious name. We pray, Lord, a special prayer for any that may be ill, any that may be sick, or any that may be shut in. Watch over them and keep them, oh God, we pray in the name of Jesus. We thank you. Amen. Thank God. All right. Bless the Lord. Uh, I did forget to hook up the prayer line. So give me just a second here and let me hook up those that are waiting for us on the uh, prayer line this morning. Uh, they... around the world communicate for free if you are the host please enter your thank you there are two participants all right now we've got the prayer line hooked up and uh, we're ready to go bless god all right uh let's go back to our uh, remember and pray for all of those members of our church family that are ill, those that are sick and those that are shut in. Remember and pray for uh, the bereaved families. Continue to pray for them and lift them up in your prayers. Uh, continue to be in prayer for one another. Uh, and uh, please, uh, at all costs, continue to be safe. And then when you go out, wear your mask, do your social distancing, wash your hands, and uh, please be safe, okay? All right, uh, so let us uh, open our Bibles and go back to the book of Second Samuel. Today we are looking at chapter 10 of Second Samuel. Now, let we, before we uh, run off in chapter 10, let's go back and... Uh, do a little review from chapter number eight, okay? I mean, chapter number nine. Uh, chapter nine uh, was the beautiful story of David. Uh, and it brought back to mind uh, the relationship that David and Jonathan had as, uh, as brothers. And uh, David is now uh, king, and uh, uh, he's been king for some years. He's conquered all of the territories around him, and and Israel is booming, okay? Uh, but David thinks about the relationship that he and, and Jonathan had had, and Jonathan and David wants to know if there are any that are of the house of Saul 
uh, in other words, any that would still be any any of Jonathan's uh, siblings that are still around, that he might show them kindness for Jonathan's sake. And uh, so he sends for Ziba, who, who was a slave or a servant in the house of Saul. And Ziba tells David that, yeah, uh, there's one. Uh, Jonathan has one son that's still living. Uh, and he's over in Lodibar. He's living in somebody's house over there. They're taking care of him. And he's lame in both of his feet. So uh, David sends Ziba to get him and bring him to him. Well, you can, can imagine if, if, if uh, you uh, are one that could lay claim to the throne and the king is sending for you, uh, you're going to have some apprehensions about going. Okay. Uh, so uh, I'm sure uh, 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 Mephibosheth had some, some, some misgivings about going see David, but when the king sends for you, you go see the king. OK, so he went to see David and David, first of all, when he came, uh, wanted to come as feel fears. And David told him, don't fear. You ain't got nothing to fear from me, uh, because if David had been going to hurt him, David would have hurt him way before now. Uh, it was the custom of kings that when you came to power, you eliminated anybody that might be able to show siege to your throne, a show reason that they might become king also. And so uh, people killed their, their families, they killed their brothers, they killed uh, anybody that could lay uh, a claim to the throne, okay? But uh, it, this has been some years, David has been king for some years uh, in Israel, and if he'd have been going to hunt down any descendants of Saul that could have laid uh, siege to the throne, he would have did it way before now. So David puts uh, Mephibosheth at peace and said, don't worry, I ain't going to do nothing to hurt you. In other words, David was a blessing. He wanted to bless Mephibosheth. So the first thing he, he did for Mephibosheth is Mephibosheth went from a pauper to a rich man, just in a matter of a few seconds, because David restored to him all the land, all the property of, of Saul that Kish's family had had, okay? Uh, David had, had probably taken this property after uh, uh, his uh, David's son, I mean, uh, uh, Saul's son uh, had taken uh, the throne. And after he had uh, uh, been assassinated uh, and David became king, I'm sure David... Uh, had taken this property for himself, okay? Could, could have been that Ziba, because he was there and he was one of the chief servants of Saul, he may have been taking care of this property for David all these years. And uh, whatever proceeds came from working this property, David had been receiving. But now, because of the uh, covenant, because of the, the relationship that David had with uh, Jonathan, David restores all of the property of, of Kish and Saul, and he gives that to Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth, who was in Lodabar, living with somebody that was taking care of him, goes from a pauper to a rich man overnight, okay? Secondly, Ziba, who, was, uh, uh, who had been Saul's servant, possibly now was David's servant, uh, David orders him, so you and your 15 sons and your 20 servants are going to work this property for Mephibosheth. In other words, now that the property is, is changing hands, I'm giving it back to Mephibosheth. Any proceeds or any, any money that is made from this property will now go to Mephibosheth. OK, and I told you, David had probably been receiving any proceeds that came from this property all of these years. But now that, the, that David has given the property back to Mephibosheth, uh, Ziba and his sons and servants are going to work the property and any proceeds are going to go to Mephibosheth. OK, the third thing that David does for Mephibosheth, he adopts Mephibosheth as one of his own. 
Mephibosheth was Jonathan's son. And remember, we look back at Second uh, Samuel chapter four, about verse four, where when uh, the nurse heard that 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 Saul and Jonathan were dead, she picked up Mephibosheth and took off with him in order to get him to safety. Uh, and she dropped him, okay, or something, and and he was injured. And Mephibosheth was lame in both of his legs, okay? So he couldn't work on any property or do anything for himself. So, so David basically adopted him into his family. And David told him, at my table, for the rest of your life, you're going to eat. Now, Mephibosheth, uh, he's got he's got all the property of Saul. He could well afford to feed his own self, but David basically was adopting him into his family, and David wanted to show kindness to Mephibosheth for the sake of his friend Jonathan. All right, and you know it's good to show kindness. Uh, I mean, kindness is 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 one of those uh, those things that we do from the heart. Okay, uh, you 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 can't you shouldn't have to be made to be kind to somebody. Okay, uh, kindness should just flow from our heart. We go to the uh, to the book of Galatians, chapter five, uh, down there about verse twenty two. Remember. Galatians 5 and 22 talks about the fruit of the spirit, okay? And one of those fruit of the spirit is goodness. And I liken goodness to kindness, okay? Uh, goodness, you, you find, I mean, uh, the Bible says that, I mean, uh, we, we say all the time, God is good, okay? And uh, when we talk about God being good, if God is good, if we are a part of him, we should be good. And goodness should include some kindness. Kindness comes from the heart, okay? Kind, you do good things for people because you've got a kind heart. You just, you just like to see people smile. You like to do things and help people, okay? And there are some people with the gift of helps. OK, you just whatever, whenever you see somebody in need, you can't hold your peace. you got to go to that person and, and see what you can do to help that person. Well, that's kindness. OK, and God's people, kindness ought to just ooze out of our veins. OK, because we got Jesus in our hearts and bless God, if you got Jesus in your heart, kindness should flow out of your heart. OK. And so uh, David showed Mephibosheth kindness. OK. Uh, have you been kind to anybody today? I mean, have you just picked up the telephone, call somebody just to see how they doing and said you were you were on my mind and I'm just calling you because I love you. OK. That's kindness, people. Show somebody some kindness before this day is over, if you will. OK. All right. Now, uh, so that's chapter nine. We went back and looked at that. Now, let's go forward to chapter 10. Chapter 10, a little bit different chapter. OK. All right. Chapter 10, read it at verse one. Came to pass after this that the king of the children of Ammon died and Hanun, his son, ringed in his stead. Then said David, I will show kindness unto Hanan, the son of Nashesh, and his father showed, as his father showed kindness unto me. All right. Now, the children of Ammon, uh, they, they basically are on the east side of the Jordan River. Okay. Uh, now, remember, Jerusalem was on the west side of the Jordan River, and you went on to from Jerusalem, you went on to Philistra, and then you went on to the Mediterranean Sea. That was that was west. That was the way the sun go down, okay? And east of the Jordan River uh, were the Ammonites. Now, uh, the Ammonites were descendants of Lot, <laughs> okay? Uh, uh, that, that sordid story in the 19th chapter of Genesis, once Lot had uh, come out of Sodom and Sodom had been destroyed and, and Lot's wife had been turned into a pillow of salt. Remember, Lot had two daughters and those two daughters got Lot drunk and had incest with Lot, okay? Uh, just read the 19th chapter of Genesis, okay? And the first daughter 
uh, the child that she had by lot uh, was the Moabites, was Moab, okay? Uh, the Moabites uh, descended from the first child. The second child, uh, the Ammonites uh, descended from them. So so the Ammonites were, were descendants of Lot, okay? And as I told you, they were they lived on the east side of the Jordan River. Now, the scripture, that, that, that second verse there said that David wanted to show kindness to uh, the Ake, Nahash uh, for some kind act that he had done for David, which we're not told about in scripture, okay? But remember when David was running from Saul, David ran and he traveled all over this country. And David made a lot of friends. David did a lot of things. A lot of people did some, a lot of good things for David. And it could have been that Nahash did something uh, good for David while David was out there running from Saul. So now that Nahash dies, okay, uh, uh, David wants to show kindness back to Nahash's son on, 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 be, uh, to, on behalf of of Nahash, thanking him for what he's done for him. Now, uh, I'm not going to take time to turn back there right now, but uh, if you want to uh, go back in your spare time reading, go back to the 11th chapter of 1 Samuel. 11th chapter of 1 Samuel uh, gives us an account of Nahash and the Ammonites. They come and they attack Jabesh Gilead, okay? And uh, they're ready to pounce on them. And, and the leaders of Jabesh Gilead come out and they said, please don't kill us. Make a league, make a covenant with us. Okay. And uh, Nahash and the, and the, and the uh, Ammonites said, okay, we'll make a league with you on one condition that you allow us to gouge out all of your right eye, all the right eyes of all the men. <laughs> okay. That's kind of, kind of a, uh, uh, uh. Uh, oh, oh, a Ouija thing, okay? You're gonna, I'm gonna make, a, you're gonna make a covenant with me, but you gotta gouge my right eye out in order to make a covenant with me. So the men go back and say, okay, give us seven days and let us decide what we gonna do, okay? So in the in the meantime, during these seven days, the men of Jabesh Gilead send to Saul. Saul is king; he has just been anointed king of, 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 of Israel, okay? So they send for Saul, and and Saul raises an army of. 33,000, uh, no, 330,000 men, okay? And he goes down to Gavish Gilead and, and, and he spanks Nahash and the Ammonites and send them back. This was Saul's first victory as king of Israel. Okay, so he saves the uh, the the uh, 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 the people of Jabesh Gilead from being having their eyes gouged out and becoming uh, uh, making this covenant with the Ammonites. Okay, so uh, go back then to chapter eleven. That's First Samuel chapter eleven that you'll find that story. Okay, so uh, David wants to show some kindness to uh, 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 the son. Uh, of uh, Nahash, being that he is coming to the throne, and uh, he wants to just show him some kindness, uh, uh, you know, he, because his father had done good to him, okay? So reading, uh, starting at verse 3. Uh, okay, here we go. And the princes of the children of Ammon said unto Hanan their lord, <laughs> Think Thou that David doth honor thy father, that he hath sent comforters unto thee? Hath not David rather sent his servants unto thee to search the city and to spy it out and to overthrow it? Mm. Now, wait a minute here, okay? Now, uh, what's happening? Uh, his, uh, Nahash, the father, had died, okay? And his son, uh, David's Hanan, David sends uh, uh, an emissary. He sends a, 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 a detail. He sends uh, uh, a, 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 a representative from the kingdom uh, on his behalf 
to show kindness to the son for his father's sake. But when they get there, his advisors, uh, he had uh, every every king's guy had advisors. Every president's got advisors. Every leader has some advisors somewhere around him. Okay. In other words, this young man, he was young and he was foolish, like so many young leaders are. Okay. He was young. He was he was immature and he was ignorant. Okay. So his, his, his advisors tell him, hey, David ain't sending people down here to comfort you. He's sending spies down here to spy out the city that he might come down here and overrun you. So don't take these guys in as spies. Take them and send them back to David. <laughs> now, okay, now we, are, we all have had the misfortune, I, I, I assume if you haven't, you have been doubly blessed of receiving some, some wrong advice from people who are friends, receiving wrong advice from people who are acquaintances of ours, okay? And Hunan has a bunch of advisors that are suspicious-minded, okay? And they are suspicious of these servants of David who David has sent down. And they tell Hunan, they ain't coming down here to comfort you. They're coming down here to spy out the city. He gives Hunan some uh, bad advice. Okay? So people did not just start being suspicious. Okay? People have been suspicious for a long time, okay? So you have to be careful when you take advice from people, okay? Uh, people do give bad advice. That's why God gave you a brain to think. Don't just take people's advice off the cuff. You need to uh, you need to think about what they the advice that they are giving you. That's why God gave you a brain. Okay. Now Israel's kings, uh, they were. I mean, they had the best uh, program that there was. God was basically going to be the leader, and God led through His kings before the king. And we've seen this over and over in the life of David before David made any decision. He went and he checked with God about it. And if people, if you want to be led right, you ought to take that pattern for David. Before you make a decision to do anything, you need to take that decision before the Lord. All right? So get, get, get God. God is the best advisor that you will ever get. And I guarantee you, he will never steer you wrong. Okay, so next time you need some advice, stop listening to your best friend. All right, stop listening to your buddies and go ask God what would his advice be to you to do. Okay, and I guarantee you, God won't steer you wrong. Well, your friends are going to steer you. Oh, they're going to be suspicious and they're going to be they're going to be hard hearted. Maybe they maybe they want to see you fall, so they're going to give you some bad advice just to see you fall flat in your face. And you better have some sense and check with God before you take the advice of your friends. All right, it's all right to ask them what the, what do you think about this. All right, but but let God be your final answer. OK, uh, let him be your leader. Let him be your guide. Let him be your teacher. OK, and I guarantee you when God lead us, God won't lead us astray. He won't lead us down a wrong path. OK, so check with God before you do. Huh? And, 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 and Hanan didn't do that. OK, he just he just listened to what his advisors told him. And he got into a lot of trouble by doing that. Now, uh, remember the story of, 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 of Rehoboam. Rehoboam was another case where there was a king that had some advisors. And the advisors uh, gave the king some bad advice. Okay? Uh, First Samuel, okay? Uh, basically, or, or Second Samuel. I think it's Second Samuel. 
tells us that, not Second Samuel, it's uh, Second Chronicles, okay? The story of, uh, of, of, of when uh, Rehoboam came to the throne. Now, Rehoboam was the son. Okay, you had David was king. After David, Solomon took the throne. And Solomon was David's son. And after a real after after Solomon, Rehoboam, which was uh, a Solomon's son, took the throne. Okay, now uh, uh, the, the the country had been, uh, you know, uh, building. They'd gone into a building uh, process, and they had they had been paying high taxes. Okay, so the people once Rehoboam came to the throne wanted some tax relief. They wanted to. To uh, hey uh, King, uh, why don't you give us a break on our taxes for a little bit? Let us let us recover for a little bit. So Rehoboam goes and he uh he had Rehoboam had had a bunch of young men for advisors, and uh, Rehoboam goes to his advisors and he asks them, so, "Hey, what should we do about these taxes? The old these people want us to to give them some tax relief." And oh, all the young men said, no, 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 king, don't let up. Like, you know, if you're going to do anything, push down on them harder. Okay. And because the king listened to these dumb young men who told him that they, that they, he should increase the taxes instead of giving tax relief, the kingdom split. Okay. We had uh, Judah and the tribe of Benjamin that went and they they confirmed and and they consorted and made up the southern kingdom and then you had the 10 northern tribes which made up Israel but it was it was all if, if, if he had just listened to the request of the older people to give them some tax relief he could have saved himself that problem but because he didn't listen God said I'm gonna I'm gonna split your kingdom okay and you go you're gonna be king over the these two little, little these two nations in the south, but Jeroboam basically came and he took over the kingdom of the north. And once the kingdom split, that brought about civil war again. They fought and they fought and they fought. Okay, so people, uh, <laughs> I can't I can't stress this enough. Uh, I know we all got friends that we trust. We all got loved ones that we trust, and we go to these people in confidence. We go to these people and we want to know what they think about our problems. All right, and you know it's all right to ask them and and you know hear what they got to say. But brothers and sisters, you better run it by God first. All right. And you better put your own mind to thinking. Don't just uh, ask them what they think and then run off and do the first thing they tell you. All right. You better consult God. Let God be your advisor. He is the best advisor you will ever get. All right. All right. Now, I had to close my Bible up here and turn away from my lesson. All right. Okay. Back to chapter 10. All right. Uh, where do we stop? Verse 5. Okay. Uh, when they told it unto David, uh, no, I got to read verse four. Okay. Uh, therefore Hanan took David's servants, <laughs> shaved off the one, the one half of their beards, cut off their garments in the middle, even to their buttocks and sent them away. <laughs> That was now this this what he did. <laughs> he first takes the men, and uh, uh, Israelites were were proud of their beards. Okay, uh, and he did he didn't cut the whole beard off, but he cut half of their beard off. Okay, then he took their their robes. Uh, these guys wore robes. Okay, he took their robes and he cut them off. Right above their buttocks, he cut them off right, right, right about their waist. Okay, and in essence, I mean, what he did is he—it uh, was one thing to mess with a man's beard and cut cut half of his beard off. All right, it was quite another to basically cut his garment off and expose his bottom parts. All right, and and not only was it uh, embarrassing, but basically what he did to these men. Basically, was he in, because these men were emissaries of the king? The king had sent these men. Not only did he embarrass and the men, he embarrassed the king, 
and the men went on behalf of the king and on behalf of the, men, the, the nation, he embarrassed the nation. And in doing this, he declared out and out war. This was, this was an act of war. Okay. Uh, I mean, he, now, now, now the next verse tells us verse, mm, I'm in chapter 11. I'm, in, I'm trying to get chapter 11, that 10. Verse five. When they told it to David, he met, he sent to meet them because the men were greatly ashamed. The men were ashamed. They were, they were embarrassed because, and they were hurt because somebody would treat them like this. All right. All right. And the king said, tarry at Jericho until your beards be grown and then return. Okay. Now the men can go get some more robes. They can get some more outer garments and put them on to cover up their nakedness, but their beards wouldn't grow back overnight. And probably what they did is they cut the other part of that beard off. So the beard would grow back evenly. So David told them to stay at Jericho until their beards regroup. Okay. Uh, verse six. And when the children of Ammon saw that they stank, <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a great term to use there. They saw that they stank. In other words, they realized what they had done uh, and they, they are, know that they're about to receive the, the wrath of David for what they have done, okay? In doing what they did, I told you they declared out and out war, okay? They basically thumbed their nose up at David and said, David, if you don't like it, come and do something about it. And you, if you know David, David was a hothead, all right? David is definitely going to do something about it, okay? Uh, and when the children of Ammon saw that they stank before David, uh, the children of Ammon sent and hired the Syrians of Bethrabah and the Syrians of Zobah, 20,000 footmen, and the king Makish, a thousand men, and of Ishmatab, 12,000 men. Now, uh, Hanan does all these things, and he declares war, but he's not ready for war. Okay. Now, if if, if you're gonna if you're gonna declare war, I would I would advise you to be ready for war. Okay. Uh, if you're gonna go out and 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 and, and, and basically uh, slap somebody upside the head and get ready, and say, you know they go they're gonna be ready to fight when you do that. You better be ready to fight. All right. Now, what happens here is basically uh, Hanish has done this dastardly deed to David. He has basically embarrassed his men. He's embarrassed the country. He's embarrassed David basically by doing what he did, knowing that this was going to probably cause war. And when David reacts and gets ready for war, he ain't ready. So what does he have to do? He's got to go and employ I mean, he got to go find some mercenary soldiers to fight on his behalf. So he goes to Syria, he goes to Ammon, and he comes up with an army of 33,000 men. He got, he got 20 of the, from uh, the Syrians. He got 1,000 from Makish, and, uh, and then he got another 10,000 from Ishba, Ishtab, okay? And these are these are these are other countries. Uh, I guess these were were allies of his. Okay, but he's got now thirty three thousand men, and now he thinks he's ready to fight David. But he don't know David, and he don't know David's number one general Joab. All right. So look at verse eight. And the children of Ammon came out and put the battle. No, I'm sorry. Verse seven. And when David heard of it. He sent Joab and all the host of the mighty men. Now, remember, Joab uh, is David's nephew. It's his sister's son, okay? And he is David's top general in the army. And David sends Joab to take care of business first, okay? And the children of Ammon, verse 8, came out 
put the battle in array. Okay, they 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 went out to the battlefield, got ready to go to war. At the entering of the gate, and the Syrians of Zoba and of Reba Ish and Ish Tab and Makish were by themselves in the field. When Joab saw that the front of the battle was against him before and behind, he chose of all the choice men of Israel and put them in array against the Syrians. And the rest of the people he de delivered into the hands of Abishai, all right, his brother. Okay, now uh, let me read the rest of this. That he might put them in array against the children of Ammon. All right, so uh, the, the, the Assyrians that was coming down from the north, basically, and the, and the Ammonites, which would have been coming from the east, okay, the uh, basically uh, they took and they put, uh, he, uh, Joab took his army and he fought against those, those uh, Assyrians coming down from the north. And he saw that the Ammonites were coming back up from the east. He took those and he divided those men to his brother. Abishai, remember uh, there were three brothers to start with, and and one of them was killed by Ammon. Remember, and that left two brothers, Abishai and Joab. Okay, now Abishai is probably a general in the army as well, but Joab is the top general. Okay, so what he does is he 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 divides his army up, and he puts a bunch of his men under the, under the leadership of Abishai. And Abishai goes and fights against those Ammonites coming at him from the east. Okay. Uh, verse 9. Oh, no, no, verse 10. And the rest of the people he delivered into the hands of Abishai, his brother, that it might be put them in array against the children of Ammon. And he said, if the Syrians be too strong for me, then thou shalt help me. But if the children of Ammon be too strong for thee, I will come and help thee. That's 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 the strategy of war. If you get in a battle and you overcome and got, I mean, you're not, I, they're too strong for you to, to take care of. I'm going to come and I'm going to help you defeat them. If you are, are, are in that problem, you having a problem, do that. I'm going to come over and help you. So basically, the, he was uh, Joab was saying, hey, if I have trouble, you come help me. If you have trouble, I'm going to go and help you. Ah, uh, verse 12, be of good courage and let us play the men for our people and for the cities of our God and the Lord do that which seemeth him good. Okay, now here's here's Joab uh, basically uh, saying, Lord, you give us victory. We're going to lean and depend upon you. We're not going out here doing our own thing. We're not going out here fighting our own battle. But Lord, we are your army. and Lord." If you see fit to have us be victorious, Lord, you let us be victorious, okay? So basically, you and I, when we go to battle, okay, the battle that we're fighting, it ain't our battle. The battle we're fighting belongs to the Lord. We're fighting his battle, okay? The battle ain't mine. I ain't got, I mean, I ain't got no hell to put nobody in. I ain't got no heaven to put them in. But this is the Lord's battle. And we're on the battlefield for the Lord, okay? So basically, uh, Joab says, hey, Lord, you give us victory if you want us to have victory. Mm. Uh, verse 13, and Joab drew nigh, and the people that were with him, unto the battle against the Syrians, and they fled before him. <laughs> Boy, now that's what I call God going before us and fighting the battle. Joab went out there and started fighting, and I guess he started getting the upper hand, and these Syrians took off. They fled. They, they started running, and that's what armies did from from God's army. They, they, they'd fight a little while and they saw they were getting whooped and they'd turn around, and take off, start running. All right. Uh, and when the children of Ammon uh, saw that the Syrians were fled, they fled, then fled, they also before. <laughs> well, see, uh, misery loves company. All right. Now the, the, the Syrians, they started losing 
they started running. And when the Ammonites saw that uh, the Syrians were taking off running, what they do? They they turned tuck tail and started running. <laughs> yeah, baby, when 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 things are going God's way, things will go God's way. I tell you. Ah, uh, uh, the Syrians were fled. Then they fled also before Abishai and it entered into the city. Uh, so uh, G Jer Jerob turned from the children of Ammon and came to Jerusalem. And when the Syrians saw that they were smitten before Israel, they gathered themselves together. And Hadarazer sent and brought out the Syrians that were beyond the river, and they came to Halem uh, and Shobak, at, the captain of the host of Hadarazer, went before them. And, and when it was told David, David gathered all Israel together and passed over Jordan and came to Halem and the Syrians set themselves in array against David and fought with him and the Syrians fled before Israel and David slew the men of 700 chariots of the Syrians and 40,000 horsemen mm. and smote uh, Shobak the captain of the host who died there. So David gets into the battle with the rest of the soldiers and David is victorious. Oh, people, I tell you, uh, this was some battle here that they were in, okay? Uh, David, uh, he slew, what did it say? Uh, mm, uh, and against uh, he and behold, he... Da, 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 Children, no, 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 where did I, where did I see that at? Men put them in array against the children of Ammon. Uh, against them before band chose Israel and put them in array against the Syrians. And the rest of the people he delivered into the hands of Abishai, uh, his brother, that he might put them in array against the children of Ammon. Okay, so this is quite a battle that they, they, they have here. Let me read verse 19. Let me finish up the chapel. And when all the kings that were servants of Hadarazer saw that they were smitten before Israel, they made peace with Israel and served them. So the Syrians feared to help the children of Ammon anymore. <laughs> I think they learned their lesson. All right. Uh, one of one of the uh uh, uh, one of the uh, books I was reading, uh, um, one of the commentaries I was reading, uh, re reference back to chapter eight on this particular battle. Now, I don't know, uh, this may have been later on, it may have been one of those battles that were contained in chapter eight, because remember, chapter eight had said, let me go back there and read the first verse of chapter eight, chapter chapter 8 said, and after this it came to pass that David smote the Philistines and subdued them and David took uh, where is it, any small moment. in other words it says that David had conquered all of the enemies that were round about in chapter 8 as it gives that list of, of, of those people that uh, David uh, had smoten uh, and if you look down in verse 3 of chapter eight, it says David smote also Hadarad Hadar 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 Okay, and that may be the the same Hadarazer that is here in this chapter. Okay, so this this chapter ten may go back into chapter eight, where David where it talks about David smote and conquered all of the enemies that were around Israel at that time. Okay. So uh, David was was quite a a warrior, and uh, under under David's tutelage, under the, under David's uh, ring, Israel uh, reached its zenith. Israel uh, conquered all of the enemies that were around them. Okay, that was why when Solomon came to the throne, and and this was one of the reasons that remember God would not let David build the tabern build the temple. 
Because he told David, David, you got too much blood on your hand. David was a man of war. Okay. Now Solomon, when Solomon came to the throne, Solomon was David's son. Okay. And when Solomon came to the throne, David had conquered all the enemies around Israel. Okay, so Solomon didn't have to do any fighting with anybody. So Solomon came the, became the great builder. Okay, he built, David conquered the land. And then Solomon, when he came to the throne, he started building. Okay, and that was why when, when uh, his son Rehoboam took the throne, the people wanted some tax relief because Solomon had taxed them to death because Solomon was building so much. Okay, so basically... Uh, Solomon, when he came to the throne, David had conquered all the enemies. So all Solomon had to do was sit back, relax, and, and become a builder. Okay. Now remember uh, the, the tabernacle, or the temple, actually. It was a tabernacle before David wanted to, when he decided he wanted to build God a temple. Okay. He said the Ark of the Covenant rests in a, in a tent, but here I am. I live in a house of cedar. So David had a good idea. He wanted to build God a house. But God told David, said, no, 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 David, you got too much blood on your hand to build my house. All right. But your son will be able to build it. OK. And so uh, uh, God allowed Solomon. David, uh, once again, was able to gather up all the materials uh, to build the tabernacle or the temple with. But Solomon was the one that erected it. OK. And uh, in Second Chronicles uh, chapter Six and chapter seven, we uh, is the basically it tells us about the uh, uh, the the crowning or the uh, the uh, dedication of that temple and that that uh, check of Second Chronicles chapter seven, verse fourteen uh, uh, is the story of how David, uh, I mean how Solomon, as he was building that temple, uh, God spoke back to Solomon and said, "If my people." who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and I'll heal the land, okay? So that was God's response to Solomon's prayer as uh, he prayed in dedication to that temple, okay? All right, so basically, uh, David uh, uh, was, a, was a conqueror, okay? David conquered all the land. Uh, around him and uh, those the, everybody uh, was 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 in submission to David all those countries around them okay and uh, David was one of the great that's why uh, David is the, the greatest king uh, that Israel ever had until Jesus Christ became king okay <laughs> all right God bless you today thank you so much for joining us we pray that uh, you were blessed in today's lesson. You got something out of this lesson today as we looked at, at chapter 10 of 2 Samuel. Hope you were blessed. All right, as we come to a close here, we're going to take, and I don't want to get into chapter uh, 11. I want to wait and, and, and look at that next week, and we'll we'll wait and we'll look at chapter 11 next week. All right, God, continue to pray for one another. Continue to pray with one another. Continue to uh, lift up one another in your prayers. Uh, we're praying uh, continuously for uh, one another. Uh, don't forget to pick up the phone and call one another. If some Lord puts somebody on your heart or on your mind, just pick up the telephone and call them and say, how you doing? I was thinking about you, okay? And uh, that's the way we do as, as believers, okay? We, we, we check on one another, okay? Uh, pray much for me. Pray for my family as I pray for you and I pray for your family. Uh, lift up and uh, pray for the leaders of our church, our deacon board and all of our uh, deaconess and our, our mothers and uh, just, just pray for one another. Amen. Let us thank the Lord for our time together today. Our Father and our God, it is once again the Lord that we come to the end of this uh, Bible study today. And Lord, we are thankful and we are grateful for our time together today. We're thankful, Lord, for the for the lesson that we've had today, Lord, as we looked at David and how David was an overcomer, how David was a man that uh, uh, when, when he put his hands to something, Lord, uh, you bless him to be uh, 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 victorious in it. And Lord, we pray that you would touch and you'd bless all that are under the sound of my weak voice. 
Pray, Lord, that you would ever continue to meet all of our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Lord, we will be so, so careful to continue to give you glory, honor, and praise. Lord, it's in your precious name we ask and we thank you for these many blessings. Thank God and amen. God bless you this afternoon. Thank you for you joining us and may God bless you. May God keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he answer all your questions and solve all your problems. May he be to you the true and the loving God that he is. God bless you. We love you. Thank you for joining us today. Amen.